I used to hunt preset stands that we had. We had like five or six preset stands in here. You stunt those. The last three years, four years, I've been mobile the same way I'm mobile on public land on this place. And I've consistently killed big bucks on this place. Right. <laughs> Yo folks, it's opening day of rifle season here in Georgia. I'm headed to my favorite piece of private. Haven't hunted it all this year. It's nice and cold this morning here in October and uh, it should be getting pretty active on the scrapes over here at this spot. I have a, I have one spot that's loaded with red oaks that I know for sure this time of year is usually pretty good. It's not super deep in the property. I don't like to penetrate this property super deep until later and closer to the rut, um, more like mid to late November. And so I have a couple spots that I save for like the week of Thanksgiving and I know that every year they're good and I'm likely to see a shooter buck in there. So I'm not gonna touch those spots right now. It's just too early in the season. And it's like a saddle and a ridge where there's a couple big red oaks that are always dropping acorns and it's just a good known area for deer. So. Uh, last time I sat here, I think I saw like nine deer, um, and it was last October. So I saw a pie ball buck here last year. Um, I don't think I had any of my film equipment when I went with me, when I went last year to the spot. So let's get over here. Um, I'm running a little late. late. It's 6:08 in the morning already right now. So it's probably gonna be daylight by the time I get over there. Uh, it's about 30 minutes away. So I'm gonna be rushing to get in the tree, but that's okay. We'll get in there um, as quick as we can and hang and hunt for a little bit. And uh, I don't have a preset stand in this spot, so I'm literally just gonna be taking everything that I hunt with on public, and I'm gonna be hanging a set um, just like I would on public. So we're gonna head in there and get in there and see what we make happen. So y'all stay with us, and let's go kill a deer this morning.
Oh my god. He had this shot of freaking big inside. <laughs> I, my, my penetration looked terrible, but I don't know. How about now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? He's, he's not super tall, but he was really wide. What are the freaking odds, man? This place is just magical, man. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I right, see you. <laughs> right, see you. All right, guys. Well, it's been a dang good day. So, this place is just magical. I mean... We don't want this place until, like, at the very earliest right now, like, middle to end of October, if we get a cold front. <clears throat> well, I was going to go hunt public this morning, and I decided, hey, I'm just going to go hunt. There's spots that I know every single year I can go and see a big deer. This is not one of them. This spot... I look back on my cameras three years ago, October 2021. I had three new bucks show up. There was a scrape at the end of this ridge. I had a cell camera on it. I had three new bucks show up on that cell camera in a three hour period on this day. So I decided, hey, I'm gonna go sit that ridge just because that might be an area where new bucks show up and cruise during the rut or early rut, pre rut. They don't really rut here until middle November. Like middle November, November 15th through the 21st or 23rd is, I always almost can kill a big deer on my birthday here. My, my birthday is November 23rd and they're always rutting pretty hard at that time. Well, this morning I decided, hey, I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna hunt and I'm gonna go to that ridge. It's got a bunch of acorns on it. I've never hunted in this on this ridge specifically. I've hunted back behind me about 150 yards or so a couple times and saw deer every time but never a big buck usually just see a pile of does in here well this morning i decided hey i'm gonna come in here and i'm gonna push back on that ridge a little bit where i can see down into this drainage well i've been sitting here all morning seeing a bunch of squirrels no deer i looked over to my right coming out of the laurel and i could see a flash of a deer and i saw his tail flick so I grabbed my binos, and by the way, these image stabilizing binoculars are the most advantageous tool in, your, in the woods. I threw those things up, threw them on stabilization, I was able to see his rack, like immediately. I was able to pick it out that, hey, that's a shooter bug. Well, I was going to grunt at him because it looked like he was headed away from me. Well, he turned, literally as soon as I spotted him in the binoculars, he turned and started walking right towards me. He walked right over the saddle and he was going to cruise the edge, the top side of this drainage right here. He was just feeding along on the acorns up through here. I was getting super nervous. I clicked on the second angle and I, you know, just kind of put my camera in the area where I thought he was going to walk to and just had it zoomed all the way out. Well, at first I ranged 20 yards because he was higher up on the head of the drainage. Well, he dropped down about another 10 yards. I ranged again real quick. And I got 30 down at the little tree that it looked like he was going to walk right past. So I drew back and he was walking and I tried to stop him in my opening and he didn't stop. He just kept walking. I didn't want to like yell at him. He didn't stop. He just kept walking. So instead of trying to stop him again, I knew he was probably already alerted a little bit. So instead of trying to stop him again, he was just walking real slow. So I just kind of followed him with the pen. And I released the arrow. It looked good. The only thing that I don't like is it didn't look like my penetration was great. I'm thinking maybe I caught that offside shoulder. It looks like it went in good behind the shoulder. He was quartering away just a little bit, so it went you know, up into the cavity that it should have. So I think he's a dead deer. But Andrew's on his way. He's about an hour away from here. So 
come back in here once Andrew gets here and start looking for this deer. I think the only thing that scared me a little bit is just a minute ago, I was getting ready to start packing my stuff up and I saw a deer across the backside of this ridge. I never got a look at it because it was over the backside of the ridge by the time I saw it all. I saw was his tail and his tail was flicking. So I'm really hoping it's not that deer and he crossed this ridge and went and laid down on this steep stuff over here. If that's still him and he's still alive, then I'm gonna have to give it some time. Um, so probably what we'll do is we'll come in here and you know try to find the blood trail, pick up the blood trail, and start looking for the arrow or something. And if we can find the arrow, then maybe we'll be okay. You know, I, I feel like he probably broke the arrow off somewhere down in here. Um, but we're just gonna back out and uh, give it some time. He's a really nice deer, freaking wide. Really, really wide buck. So I'm excited to see what he really looks like in person. I never really got excited about his rack just because I could tell you it's something I want to shoot. And uh, I just, I didn't try, to, I, try, I try not to focus on the rack because I get really bad buck fever. So anyways, I'm gonna back off, back out of here and uh, get out of the tree, go eat some food or something, just kind of kill some time. I'll come back in here, look, it's supposed to get 70 degrees today, so I need to get him out of here pretty soon. But it's not, it's not hot right now, it's probably in the 40s right now. <coughs> so, y'all stay with me. Alright guys, I gotta tell you. So we've had this place for about five, no, probably seven, eight years now. And I used to hunt preset stands that we had. We had like five or six preset stands in here. Used to hunt those. The last three years, four years, I've been mobile the same way I'm mobile on public land on this place. And I've consistently killed big bucks on this place every single year since then. So being mobile and having a mobile setup, whether you're a private land or a public land hunter, is a huge asset to you as a hunter. And you need to take advantage of that because I'm a firm believer in first sit, best sit. And it's my first sit in this spot ever. And my first sit on this property this year. And I waited for the time to get right, waited for the weather to get right. And the first deer I see is a freaking shooter. So. It works, guys. Being mobile is incredibly useful. It's a tool that you need to have in your toolbox. And if you're not using something mobile, you need to get something mobile. Get you an XOP set up. You can get a nice stand set up like this one right here. You can be extremely mobile. I'm using climbing spikes. In Georgia, those are legal. Not legal in all states, but I'm using climbing spikes. There's no better setup than this right here. I slipped in this morning, basically at daylight. It was breaking daylight when I walked in. I slipped down our little, we have an old road bed that we followed down through here. I slipped down the old road bed, cut up here, found a red oak right here that was dropping acorns. Could tell the ground was a little disturbed. So I said, you know what, I'll sit right here and see what happens. Well, that deer came right through here. He came right from over there, funneled right down into this drainage. I shot him right down here at 30 yards. Hoping this is a dead deer, man. The shot makes me nervous because the arrow didn't get great penetration. But I think it I think it's fine. I think I caught his offside shoulder and he's dead. So Andrew's gonna get here in about an hour. And then we'll just see what we can do. So y'all stay with us. Just no good penetration. He didn't stop. See how far the air is hanging out? Can you zoom in at all? No, not on this. That's why I was doing it on here so I could. You put I mean, it right in the daggone pocket, son. Yeah, I mean, it looked good as far as like where it hit. So I can do this, hang on. I'm just worried about, a little bit about the, the penetration part, but I think it may have got more penetration than I think. It just pushed it back out. It's just really hard to tell. I mean, starting there, from when the time it hits him, you said the shadow, but I mean, yeah. 
I still think that's over half your area. Yeah. I'm almost certain that's the offside shoulder. Because, I mean, if you look from there to there, you can see it, it looks like it kicks back out. Yeah, yeah. Because that there is way farther in than that right there is as it comes. But here's what makes me nervous. So I saw that deer across the ridge, right? Yep. I, I waited 30 minutes. I waited another 30 minutes just to see if I could see that deer again. I packed up all my stuff real quiet, got down out of the tree, and when I took like three steps away from the tree, I heard a deer get up on the back side of that ridge. Where he went? Well, it would have been, it was like, like 50 yards from me. So that doesn't really make sense. Why would that deer circle around and come bed down I, I wouldn't think right so. there? Because it's really thick. The way he runs is super thick mountain world down there. So he'd probably yeah. go down to that and there's a creek down there. So, but listen, let's play it in like real time. And you can almost hear him stop running either that or he just goes down into a hole and you just can't hear him anymore. But, is that a rose or is that a tree? Uh, that's a tree. Uh, gotcha. Good lord, son. Yeah, he's a nice deer, dude. <laughs> he's got a little swag in his back, too. I think he's probably an older deer. It's he looks an older deer. Yeah. He's a big old body deer. Don't have much for time length, but... He makes up for that in width. Yeah. Main beams. There. It almost sounded like he crashed right there. He may have. <laughs> I didn't even go look where the arrow was or anything. I mean, because like listen, because I mean, you hear him running. It's and like, then there's, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it almost sounds like he dang it's hits the dirt and slides. Yeah. Yeah, there's something it, like that's that's not that's not just continuous running. Yeah, and that's not just him. It's not just stopping. It's almost like he slides. Yeah, yeah. He may be freaking dead right there. It's like you can hear branches breaking. I would say either that or it sounds like he falls into a tree or yeah. something. Dude, I heard get up. It was like right over here in this grass stuff. It went down the hill. Where were you sitting? I was up there on top of that ridge, but on the other side of it. Where would you shoot him? On the other side of that ridge. We just straight over the backside. Yeah. And then he went down that ridge. The way he was running was down that ridge. Well, it's been right at three hours. I'm not yeah. terribly concerned, but I don't want to just blow in. I want to go look at blood and see what it looks like. Yeah, there you go.
Kicked and he ran right down through here. He went down or he went across? Oh, he was like five yards above this bed. Look. He runs off. Drag the bar. He's like right above that dead log up there. See that kind of jumps yep. over. Problem is the side that he's hit on is going uphill, so probably not gonna be. Yeah, I mean it's the arrows the bottom third of the body. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. Okay. What's the It's dark. It is dark. There's a bunch of white hairs. It ain't that low, though. The white hair ain't too big with these around. Yep. Right there. Dark. It's been long enough, even if he's liver hit, he probably. Uh, and it may be liver hit, but even if it is, it goes into lungs. But I don't think that was far enough back to be liver. Yeah. That blood looked better than it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still pretty dark. But it's already dry, too, so it's hard to tell. Mm. Bleeding pretty decent. Man. Yeah. I mean, just for one, mm -hmm. one hole right here. Right here on this brown leaf in front of you. Right there. Speak it into existence. I don't know, that leaf on the backside's awful red. Yeah, there's blood right here. Blood right here. Peroxide might not have been a terrible idea just because it is dry blood. Yeah. Yeah, we get back and get it. Not unless we need it. Most of that there, he's been bleeding plenty good enough to find it, unless we just can't find anything. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Bro. <laughs> yeah, he freaking died almost in sight. Oh, yeah. Told you, son. Yeah, dude. Dang it, Bobby. Look at Ali. He's been great for a while. Now he died immediately. Heck yeah, dude. Bro. <laughs> He's a nine. Freaking stud nine, yeah. Heck yeah, dude. That's awesome. Wow. I can't believe he was dead that quick. You think we should still back out? Yeah. Probably should still back out. <laughs> Heck yeah, bro. Careful, your arrow's hanging out the back of him. Is it? Yeah. Running down beside his back right leg, his back left leg, okay. on the ground. Dude, can't believe he died that quick. <laughs> yeah, he's done it. Got blown up. You think he's alright? Oh, damn, my arrow's right here, dude. I told you. The tip of my arrow. That's past the offside shoulder, but. Yeah. It came out of his shoulder. It penetrated better than I thought it did. Joker's wide as crap, bro. Yeah, he's freaking... <laughs> what do you think? 18, 19 wide, bro? Yeah, at least. He ain't got much for time to hit their brows, but... I'll take him. It's crazy. He turned out come down here and did a full three. He died right here. That's pretty wild. 
I can't believe that. Golly, this thing's like...